The original Lian Li Hydro Shift AIO is currently sitting at the top of our performance charts, but today the company is launching a new Hydro Shift 2 LCD C AIO with a smaller dimension radiator, only 22 millimeters thick. It comes with a choice of two different fan configurations or a completely fanless version so users can add their own fans. But does this new smaller dimension thinner radiator Hydro Shift 2 still have the same chart topping performance as its predecessor? Well, let's find out. So here it is, the Lian Li Hydro Shift 2 LCD. I know a lot of you on the Facebook groups and forums have been very eagerly awaiting the launch of this. Well, here it is now. And as soon as you pull this out of the box, you can feel and see the quality of this, which you get with Lian Li products. They don't seem to fail to disappoint when it comes to how something looks and the build quality. And again, as soon as you pull this out of the box, you can instantly see that this is a quality product. And that's a good job really, because it does come with a quite a high premium price. It's available in several different versions. So there's this one with the TL wireless fans. There's also a Unifan CL fan version, and there's a completely fanless version so you can actually buy this with no fans including and add your own fans. It's also available in black or white color schemes. The TL wireless version, which is this one here, this has an MSRP of around 240 bucks. The Unifan CL version, that's 180 bucks MSRP. And then the fanless version, that's about 160 bucks. Compared to its predecessor, the Hydro Shift 2 features a reduced size radiator to increase case compatibility, as well as a sliding tube clamp for precise alignment. It's equipped with a 2.1 inch circular IPS LCD screen with 480 by 480 resolution, 60 hertz refresh rate and 500 nits brightness with three modes of control including USB and wireless. It also features an improved CPU block mounting mechanism, a choice of two different fan configurations or even a completely fanless version and they all come with a six year warranty for peace of mind. This is compatible with all current Intel and AMD desktop platforms so Intel LJ1851 and LJ1700 it's also compatible with AMD, AM4, AM5. There's obviously quite a few noticeable differences between the original and the Hydro Shift 2 LCD. The most noticeable ones are the LCD screen, that's now a circular screen, it was a square screen previously, and the radiator is only 22 millimeters thick rather than the standard 27 millimeters. The reason for that is to improve compatibility with cases. The dimensions overall of the radiator are smaller than the previous hydro shift. It's also equipped with a new bracket system on the tubing. So previously you could swap the brackets from one side to the other on the original hydro shift, but the adjustment was quite limited on the tubing. You can see there's the series of holes here. So these are screw holes for the two screws that hold this bracket in, loosen those screws off. This bracket has some adjustment in it and you can slide it side to side. So you can adjust the positioning of the tubing and you can move the bracket along further up these screws, depending how far you need to adjust the tubing. The great thing about this as well is you don't have to have the bracket fully tightened when you install it. So what you do is you install the radiator into the case, leave these screws that hold the brackets on loose and then you adjust the position of the tubing and then these screws here these align with 140 millimeter fan mounts so you can just tighten those in place and that holds the tubing secure once the radiator is mounted in the case with 20 years of pc manufacturing experience cyberpower pc are the best in the business with the largest range of parts available in the uk our team of experienced builders will expertly build and test each system to be delivered to you the very next day check out cyberpowersystem.co.uk the radiator is an all aluminium radiator as i said the dimensions are smaller than the previous hydro shift at 400 by 122 by 22 millimeters so it's only 22 millimeters thick slightly shorter and slightly narrower than the previous hydro shift radiator so it is giving up some cooling surface area compared to the original Be interesting to see how if at all how that affects the thermal performance on one side of the radiator here there is a plastic cover that covers up where the tubing 
actually enters the radiator, but you can unclip that plastic cover. And then in there, you can see a little circuit board for the wiring to the fans and to the pump. And also the tubes there, you can see they go in on 90 degree fittings. It's a corrugated tubing. So it's not flexible rubber tubing, but it is a corrugated server grade tubing, which allows for tighter bends. And it also means that the internal diameter of the tubing when it is bent, it retains its full diameter so it doesn't restrict flow at all. You can see the tubes are also covered with a premium looking braided sleeving and it comes with a couple of tube clamps that you can fit to the tubing near the CPU block to retain the shape once it is installed. The tubing length is 450 and 470 millimeters. One of the tubes is 20 millimeters longer than the other. That's just to allow for this to be rooted as it is and go into the radiator as it does do at this side. Tubing length on this isn't as important as in some other coolers because you're not worrying about whether the CPU block will reach from the front of the case to where the CPU block is installed on the motherboard because this is only really designed to be installed in the top of a case. At the CPU block side, you've got rotary 90 degree fitting. So if you do need some movement or play in the tubing while you're installing the CPU block, there are those rotary 90 degree fittings there which give plenty of movement in them. There's also where the tubing is crimped to the fitting, there's a cover on there, it's a black cover with a kind of brushed or machined aluminium ring around the top, complement the rest of the premium look. The base of the CPU block is copper, it comes with a protective film on it, so make sure you peel this off before installing the CPU block or you will have serious thermal problems. You can see it is a copper microskived coal plate. It's a big square coal plate, so it will cover the IHS on the rectangular Intel CPUs, no problem. You can see it comes with this mount pre-installed. You use this upper mount for either Intel or AMD installation. These two legs here at either side, they actually slide under the bracket, which makes it impossible to have poor contact because it holds it in the correct position whilst you screw down the four thumb screws. It's quite difficult to get this cooler to a good angle to show the CPU block on camera. This is more or less how it will be installed in the system. And you can see that is the amount of tubing that you'll really see once it is installed to your system. Depending on how you have the tubing installed, it should also be perfectly aligned vertically with the CPU block. On top of the CPU block is a circular LCD screen. It's a 2.1 inch IPS, 480 by 480 resolution and 500 nits brightness. So it is a really nice, bright looking LCD display once it's installed and powered on. There's plenty of different preset screens that you can scroll through, either by rotating the CPU block clockwise or by using the Leon Lee L-Connect 3 software. That depends on the different mode that you have it connected. There are three different connection modes, which I'll talk you through later towards the end of the video. And also at the top of the block here, this bar around the circumference of the LCD screen, this is also illuminated with RGB lighting. And if you want to adjust that manually, so if you're in the mode that allows for manual adjustment. You just have to rotate the top of that block anti-clockwise and that'll scroll through the different RGB effects. The pump is fully PWM control and it has a speed range up to 2,500 RPM. And as you can see, there's absolutely no cables or wiring at all to that pump block. So when it's installed, it should have a really clean look. So as I say, there's a couple of different versions of fans you can have with the cooler, either the Unifan CL fans or these Unifan TL wireless fans. They come with a wireless receiver connected to the end there. You just slide it and that can come off. So that's the wireless receiver. You're probably wondering, well, if it's wireless, then why does it have a cable to it? It still needs to take power from the motherboard. So there's two power cables here. They connect up to a PWM header on the motherboard. You should be able to run this with just one of those connected. But if the motherboard doesn't supply enough power, connect both up. So these are the TL wireless fans. You may have seen these on the channel before. I've used these in a few builds, the wireless versions. They come with full PWM speed control and have a speed range of 200 to 2,600 RPM. Maximum airflow of 71 cubic feet per minute. Maximum air pressure of 3.97 millimeters H2O and a maximum noise output of 33 decibels. They have a fluid dynamic bearing setup full ARGB lighting effects and on the end of them they have infinity mirrors too so the RGB lighting effects show really nicely on those infinity mirrors. In terms of wiring to the rest of the cooler so the fans just need this 
power cable, but the rest of the cooler also needs another power cable for the pump, so you will need another PWM header to connect that to. And there's also, again, you're probably wondering why, if it's a wireless cooler, why there is a USB connection. That's because you can have it installed in several different control modes, either using USB or using the wireless transmitter that can connect either to a USB Type-A port in the rear I.O. or in the front panel if you want to connect it up at the front. It also has a connector there for an adapter cable so that you can connect it to a motherboard USB 2 header. So depending on which mode of control you want, whether you want wireless or whether you want a hardwired control, will depend on what cables you connect up, but you will need to connect up all the power cables. So one four pin power cable to the pump and then another two four pin PDM power cables for the fans. So that's pretty much all the basic information and details about the cooler. Let's have a look now how it's installed on our AMD Ryzen 9 9950X test system and let's take a look at the thermal performance. If you want to read more information about the Lian Li Hydro Shift 2 LCDC, make sure you head over to kitguru.net where there will be a full written review page showing more information and the full testing methodology. So if you want to check that out, make sure you head over there. Accessories that come with the cooler include an AMD mounting kit with two plastic retention brackets and screws, an Intel mounting kit including a back plate, two plastic brackets and four standoffs, a pack of radiator mounting screws, two thumb screws for fastening the sliding brackets to the chassis, a tube of thermal compound and a spreading tool, a plastic trim to cover the CPU block mounting screws, extra rubber covers for the fan mounting holes, the USB L wireless transmitter, an adapter cable to hardwire the transmitter to a USB header and a small Allen head screwdriver. Our test system uses an AMD Ryzen 9 9950X CPU so I'll quickly run you through the installation on AM5. First remove the stock AMD retention brackets from the mother board and screw the Lian Li brackets in place using the screws provided with the kit. Apply thermal compound to the CPU IHS and at this point it is advised to install the radiator in the case but do not fully tighten the screws. Install the water block to the CPU, engage the block with the bracket and slide it all the way to the left to align it before tightening the thumb screws then install the decorative trim. Ensure there is adequate clearance between the tubing arc then adjust the radiator and sliding brackets position to align the tube in, then tighten the radiator screws and fix the sliding brackets in place using two thumb screws. Connect the four pin power cable from the radiator to a motherboard fan header. It's recommended to use a CPU underscore fan header to prevent the BIOS from reporting a CPU fan fail error. Connect the USB cable from the radiator to a USB 2 motherboard header. This can remain disconnected after connecting the L wireless transmitter for wireless mode. Then connect the four pin power cable from the L wireless receiver to the motherboard PD WM headers. One should be okay, but connect both if the motherboard power is insufficient. So the installation process overall is quite simple. Lian Li has modified the installation process to make it easier. It's now got this sliding bracket where you kind of hook the CPU block underneath the bracket and then slide it into position to make sure it's properly engaged with the CPU. Then you tighten the thumb screws up and you can see when it is installed, it is a really pretty looking CPU cooler. You do pay for looks with Lian Li and this one does not disappoint in that department. The clean CPU block, I really like the look at that. There's no cables, no wiring or anything at the CPU block. And you've even got this cover that covers over the thumb screws to completely hide those out of view. It looks really clean, very smart looking once it is installed. There's also three different connecting modes. So you can have an offline mode, so you don't connect USB and you don't even plug in the wireless adapter to control the different settings. So what's seen on the LCD screen, you just rotate the top of the CPU cooler clockwise and that scrolls through the different LCD settings. And then to change the RGB, you just rotate the top of the CPU block anti-clockwise and that scrolls through the different RGB settings and different configurations. The second mode is real-time mode so for real-time mode you have to have the USB connection connected to a motherboard header 
and that allows for complete control of all the LCD display settings. You can even add custom images in that mode. It also allows for complete customization and configuration of the RGB lighting and of the fan and pump speed control. The third connection mode is wireless mode. So that means you don't connect any USB cables from the cooler to the motherboard, but you do need the wireless L connect adapter or the L wireless adapter connected to a USB either in the back of the motherboard IO or it can be connected with the extension kit cables to a USB 2 header on the motherboard. In that mode, you get almost complete control. You can adjust the preset LCD screen settings. You can adjust all the RGB lighting effects and customizations. But the only thing you can't do with that is add a custom image to the LCD screen. You have full pump speed and fan speed configuration wirelessly in the wireless mode too. So that's the installation process. It's really simple once you decide on which connecting mode you want to use. They'll say it's a really clean installation once it's complete. So now it's installed on the 9950X test bench. Let's have a look at the thermal performance. We'll start by looking at noise output as this will give us a better understanding of the thermal performance based on the noise. The Lian Li Hydro Shift 2 LCD is by no means a quiet cooler at 100% fan speed with a maximum noise output of 50 decibels. However, at almost 2600 RPM, maximum fan speed is very high and compared with other fans at similar speed, the noise output of the Lian Li TL fans is quiet in comparison. With the fans at 100% speed, the Hydro Shift 2 LCD is trading blows with some of the top coolers we have tested so far on the 9950X. Even though it has a slimmer radiator, it still performs on par with its predecessor and is level pecking with the top ranking 420 millimeter AIO at 50 degrees C over ambient average CPU temperature. For the HydraShift 2 LCD C to hit the 40 decibel noise normalized target, we have to reduce fan speed down to 1450 RPM, but the cooler still hangs on with solid thermal performance at 6 61 degrees C over ambient, which again equals the original hydro shift performance and is again on par with the 420 millimeter Silverstone Ice Mist, which is remarkable considering it's giving up some cooling surface area against both of these coolers. The important metric in the PBO test is clock speed as the CPU automatically adjusts frequency based on temperature. So the temperature delta between coolers is very close. In this scenario, the Lian Li Hydro Shift 2 LCD C is again at the top end of our chart with an average clock multiplier of 52.6 while cooling over 250 watts package power. It's matching the performance of its predecessor and outperforms the 420 millimeter Silverstone unit. So even though the radiator dimensions have been slimmed down, there's no reduction in performance, which is very impressive. So overall, I really like this CPU cooler. Yes, it is quite expensive at almost 240 bucks MSRP, but you can see just by looking at this cooler when you pull it out of the box, it is a quality product. Lian Li always seems to nail it in terms of the build quality and how things look. I know looks is always a subjective thing, but I don't think there's many people that would argue with the fact that this looks great. Once it's installed, the clean look around the CPU block, those short tubes that just fit underneath the radiator, it does look great once it's installed. If you've got a system and you care about how it looks, then you really, can't go wrong with this cooler but the great thing with it is it has the performance also to back it up it is at the top of the charts in the high speed fan test in the noise normalized test and in our pbo test so you can't argue with performance at all yes price is quite expensive but you're paying for quality it's an easy installation process the software works well i didn't come across any issues while playing around with the configuration of the lcd screen or the rgb lighting or any of the fan or pump speeds. And you can also synchronize the fan and pump speeds to the motherboard, so you can control it with motherboard software if you want to. And you have those three different modes of configuration. So depending on how you've got your system set up, you should be able to install this and have it running exactly how you like it. So in terms of performance, ease of installation, and the looks, this is probably for me the best AIO cooler I've come across so far. It's certainly one of the top performers on this new test system. Let me know what you think of the Lian Li Hydro Shift 2 LCDC in the YouTube comment section. If you've enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already a KitGuru subscriber. If you enjoy what we do here at KitGuru and you want to help support us, you could head over to our store and pick up some of our merch, or you could even subscribe to our Patreon. And as always, if you want to catch up on all the in-depth technical reviews, 
head over to our website.